Because there's not a lot of vibration on the motorcycle, didn't have to rubber mount it. Welcome to MCC Just Motos. Hey, good afternoon guys. It's Andy from MCC Just Motos. I wanted to give you my engineering thoughts on the Livewire S2 Del Mar. It has some really neat concepts, some really good engineering, a few compromises, but really just some really nice touches that I really wanted to bring your attention to and kind of give you a deconstruction of what I think the engineers did really good on the Livewire S2 Del Mar. So let's check it out. The Livewire is the company's first branded Livewire electric motorcycle released from the company. It features an 84 horsepower motor, direct drive with 194 foot-pounds of torque with effective 704 pounds of torque at the rear wheel. It is direct drive with a belt drive. Flat track inspired. Again, 10.5 kilowatt middleweight with a level two charging capability. It's naked, little bikini fairing, that's about it. First engineering thought I wanna talk about is the style of it. It is flat track, more of a complete flat track style. It really looks like it, inspired by the XR750 from Harley Davidson back in the day. But it works really well for a city bike, a round town bike, and also a commuter bike. You can hoon around with it, you can cruise around with it, you can go in the city with it, and it's a really comfortable, cool looking motorcycle. The fact that Livewire didn't put a fairing on here kind of reduces some of the aerodynamic efficiencies, but again, style was a big thing on this one, and it really, I think, knocks it out of the park with the styling. The bike is 30.9 inches tall in the seat. It's actually taller than a lot of motorcycles out there right now. I'm gonna show you what I look like on the bike. I'm 5'9". The bike is a little bit of a throw to get your leg over. Um, I have a 32 inch inseam and I can't flat foot. I, uh, I could touch both toes on the ground, but I cannot flat foot. I have to lean a leg over to touch. It's not a impediment to someone who's been seasoned a rider, but a new beginner rider or just someone beginning, uh, it might take a little getting used to. So it's a pretty tall, leggy bike. What that does, it allows for quite a bit of hip to foot peg leg room here. I'm not sure the exact specifics, but um, even taller riders will find a lot of leg room here, which is very comfortable. And the mid peg design is not quite sport bike. It's not quite cruiser, it's not standard, but it's, I'd say, a, a standard flat track feel. It really feels like that. It allows you to do a few things. It allows you to stand up on the motorcycle when you need to stand up or you want to stand up. So that seating position is really good. Now I'm going to show you the next part about the seating position, which is this very thin, narrow seat. The bike is very thin and narrow in the seat here. And what that does, the whole bike is very thin. In fact, let's get a profile this way. It's one of the thinnest motorcycles, almost dirt bike in style, right here by the battery. Because it's so thin, it really is a good, comfortable feel to it. You don't get pushed up against the front when you sit on it. You can put all your tailbone area right on the back here. And you get a lot of leg room and a lot of comfort sitting on this hard seat. The seat's very hard and very firm with a, a, a sample, a, a good, good deal of back padding here when you really get on it. What that does is the heart of the seat actually makes it more comfortable long distance. I commute on this motorcycle 80 to 150 miles a day and the firm seat actually makes it really nice. It also makes it really nice to maneuver around on the motorcycle and kind of put yourself on the foot pegs. Speaking of which, Look at those foot pegs. They're not rubber mounted. They're standard metal great foot pegs, both passenger, pillion, and front. Allows you to get some great leverage, great feel on it. It's, a, it's, it's really a good way to get a grip on there. Because there's not a lot of vibration on the motorcycle, didn't have to rubber mount it. So it's very cool to be able to have a graded 
foot prey to really get your feet on there nicely and not have to have rubber mounting. And it looks cool. A little dirty, but the motor's underneath there. We, we Again, we talked about 194 foot pounds of torque, 84 horsepower. There is torque right off the bat, which is pretty nice. Um, the, the, the torque band is spread the entire way. So this motor is really good. There are other motorcycles electric that have higher horsepower and maybe a little bit higher torque, but they wanted to go with the torque on this one. And the fact that it's direct drive reduces the weight and makes the power more linear without having to go through a full bevel system. So it's very sensitive and they did a great job on the throttle feel with the direct drive without having to go through a bevel system. LiveWire decided to go with the level two charging system right there. You can do level one or level two. Level two is a engineering choice that really they went with because level three adds a huge amount of weight if you do a level three charger. And level two is more prominent in uh, around the charging systems across the United States, I think, and just around the world. So they went with level two. It takes a little bit longer to charge, a lot longer to charge than the level three, you know, 45 minutes versus uh, two hours total time, I'd say zero to zero to full. Um, but it's more accessible and I think more people will be able to use it. The bars are flat track inspired. Um, they use standard Harley Davidson switch gear on here, like the Sports Dress, the Pan America, um, they all have this new switch gear with traditional turn signals. I think that makes it more universal for those riding in other countries who are used to the turn signals on one stock instead of both for Harley Davidson. Um, and then this is a standard display for the Sportster S and Nightster I believe has it as well too. Uh, I like the switch gear. It's really easy to intuitive to use, but Everything is rotated a little a little towards the rider, a little down. It makes getting to the top very easy to use, but the, the bottom part of the switch gear um, is a little harder to use when these controls are rotated down, especially underneath here, the traction control, push to talk, the horn and signal. It's just a little harder to use. Um, rotating it forward may or may not help but then you're, you miss the usability on the top here. They didn't skimp out on the fork selection and the shock selection, full rebound and, and dampening compression ratio, upside down forks on the front with a single shock in the rear. Looks like it has a little linkage right there. So fully adjustable and great right from the factory set for your weight with no, no issues there. The brakes are right off the Pan America, it feels like. Uh, they are Brembo, but we have a single rotor in the front with a single rotor in the rear. Uh, what are they, four piston? Looks that way. Four, uh, four piston calipers, really great feel. I haven't needed two discs on there, save a little weight. Um, the rear stops fine, but there's not a bunch of fuel for the rear brake. One of the areas they least compromise on this motorcycle is the tire selection. They did not compromise on this at all. They went right for the style, right for the look, right for flat track. They are co-branded Dunlop tires. You see it says live wire on there there. They're Dunlop tires. Uh, I forget the name of them, Dunlop DT1s. These tires are very round. They're dual compound, meaning they're hard in the middle and soft on the edges here. You can see I scraped down here, but you can't get much past this area right here. Um, they make it great for commuting. In fact, um, you can go over stuff without hurting the rims, but you don't get a lot of road feel on the edges of the tires with these round shaped tires. So they're very stylistically great and handling they're decent but you're not going to get the absolute best sporting on-road feel with them but you will get the uh, capability to do flat tracking with these flat track inspired tires
one last styling thing I think is you have this detachable fender right here. Um, I think it's needed and I think you have to have it just for the lighting. I think it would look better without it. You can imagine uh, getting rid of this fender right here and just having it with a tucked in plate under there. I'm sure that will be available at some time, but uh, very cool. So there you have it. Uh, some of the different engineering features and thoughts that I thought about this motorcycle. The range on this is suited for what it is. It's not gonna be a super long distance tour. Uh, it could be city commuting, but you can do uh, some highway commuting on it if you plan accordingly. Check out my other video here on how I commute on this motorcycle and how you may wanna think about it if you commute too. You'll have to make sure that you plan your uh, commuting range just correctly. Make sure you have charging on distant ends if you do it, but totally doable. Um, all right, guys, that's going to do for me. Please like and subscribe. Let me know what engineering questions you thought about or questions you have. Drop, drop the questions down below. Please like and subscribe, and we'll catch you on the next episode.